Well, as I was going through this and a number of other experiences about learning, one of the things that was happening was is this little baby boy was, was developing. And what he taught me was that <clears throat> every human being is born learning oriented. They're born, their entire nervous system, learning to extend itself into being here. Learning to, let's turn the lights on, I wanna jump. <laughs> When a child learns to walk, as an example, right, they, the, the process that they're going through is a process because there's nobody out there telling them what to do. There's no maps with what to do. They're in this process of feeling themselves in relation to a floor or a resistance in gravity and tuning the impulses in their body so as to allow themselves to extend more competently and to being able to move in space. It's not like there's some brain ticker going by, some little read it instruction book. It's not like they're getting some map out in the world. They're tuning in, it's kind of an acoustical process, a three-dimensional feedback system internal to themselves where they learn how to trust their own impulse process as the basis for how that is they can move in the world. The same process is how they learn to differentiate a T from an E. But now they're doing it in visual space. The same process is involved to be able to tell the difference between words instead of just having sounds that all blend together. The same process is involved in differentiating smells and tastes. That what they're, do what they're doing is, is that they're using all the different levels of things happening in them, inside them, in relationship to all the different things going on inside of them to tune in to how to trust this whole flood of impulses going on inside of them. This is kind of the ground of how children tune in to being here in their senses, in their bodies, emotionally. Now what I want to say about uh, education real briefly before I go come back to this point that we are is that whereas a child's natural learning process does this in terms of space, visual space, auditory space, all the different dimensions that they can extend in to be aware of, to be present in, which is what their nervous system is driving them to do, they bump into a world when they start to uh, get involved with language and knowledge and education in particular and structure in which the entire experience that they have is that the same process that they grew up with, that they so miraculously learned to walk with and hear with and see with and taste with and differentiate their experience with is totally irrelevant in the educational environment. They are taught thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of times over their K-12 experience that the fluctuations of their needs, their learning needs, are irrelevant to their learning. And ultimately, that's what all this is about today. <laughs> Just unpacking that one little point and what it means to change, to be reflective and honoring of that. I mean, let me back up and, and come into this at another angle. There's a thought experiment I use called the insidious curriculum. Okay. Imagine, if you will, that standing before me in my hands is this tube. And in this tube, is the K-12 curriculum. And there's windows and doors all over this tube that represent the intentional experiences of education. This is what we want you to learn. This is what we, our curriculum intends, these windows and doors, right? And children go through one end and come out the other end. And what I want to say is forget all the windows and doors. Forget all the things we intend kids to learn. What is it they're learning from the nature of the tube itself? Yes. What they're learning is, is that whereas, again, as I mentioned, in learning how to extend into space or to extend into hearing or extend into seeing or smelling or tasting or any of the rest of their biological sensory differentiation processes of being here, when they come into the world of knowledge and structure and learning in the educational sense and at home as it bleeds through, they're learning that these impulses, what I call meaning needs, like for example, right now, as I speak, and throughout words, some of which are from California and have got weird colors on them, people are having needs here. They're having what I call meaning needs. That they're hearing a word and they don't understand how I'm using it. 
So in a classroom, for example, where there's 30 kids, and their constant experiences, things are flying by, and it's causing them to have these needs going flying up and down inside of their body. It's almost as if, in fact, this is a metaphor that I really like, it's, it's almost as if you can think of a learner or yourself and feel it this way, as if your body and your mind and your guts are fu full of iron filings that are kind of floating, and that the experience that you're in, whether you're in a classroom or you're reading a book, is like having an electromagnet around that's causing all these things to move all over the place, right? Now, when you were growing up, you learned because you learned how to make sense out of all that, learn how to walk with it and talk with it and hear with it. But in education, this is happening in a classroom. And, what you're, and because the classroom can't respond to that, what it's teaching the children through hours and hours and thousands and thousands of experiences is all that's meaningless. When they're reading a book and they have a problem and they drop out, they don't understand this word, they don't understand this particular approach to a presentation. Same thing, they're having these needs pop up, system can't respond, so what are they learning? They're learning that this fluctuating, punctuating meaningfulness is irrelevant to learning. It's not that anybody intends this, it's not that there's any fault in this, it's just the pervasive quality of the way the system works. And so long as it works that way, no matter what else we talk about in terms of restructuring or any of these other processes, we're falling way short of creating an environment in which somebody who's learning oriented could come into being.